<laughs> I know. Like, it's so crazy. So if it's like someone says, how... Confucius say, that's your uh -huh. relative. That's well, I mean, he ancestor. was a disciple. He wasn't actually Confucius, but he was a disciple. <laughs> <That's laughs> He's a disciple. Still. Hello, Outcast fans. Hello, Ling Dai Ling Lu. Yes, it's Paji and Yasmin. Today we have a special guest. If you don't know, this is Christine Wong. She is one of our Thai goddesses that gave us our first ever meet and greet in New York City. Hi. <laughs> So, um, let, yes, we want to give you the space to introduce yourself before we get into all things food. Um, and let us know, like, you know, who you are and why you're here. Yeah. Hey, my name is Christine. I'm found on Instagram at Conscious Cooking. Uh, I'm a cookbook author, graphic designer, uh, creative manager at Pearl River Mart. And I... <laughs> And I'm coming out with my new cookbook, um, which is called The Vibrant Hong Kong Table. It's so vibrant. I mean, look at the colors. <laughs> and it matches my shirt and my kitchen. It's so <laughs> My <beautiful>. friend's kitchen. <laughs> it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Oh, Thank guys, you. this yeah. is so vibrant. I it mean, even the recipes vibrant. inside, I'm sure it's super vibrant. <laughs> exactly. So the book is my love letter to Hong Kong, but everything is plant-based. Awesome. Mm. Plant-based. Yes. And that's what's so special about it because, right, like that's what I'm curious about. Like I know a lot of the Cantonese dishes and, and everything is very like, there's a lot of different meat, right, that goes into it. So I'm sure like, you know, making it plant-based, like I'm curious, like the whole process, but yeah but also love letter to hong kong that's so romantic i love it <laughs> it's true it's so cute so you are from hong kong correct correct my family's there for three generations um mm. yes from before that is Guang, guangzhou or uh before that is guangzhou and like uh, uh, the villages around that area and like centuries ago it was uh up in the north Actually, one of my mothers, from my mother's side, one of our earliest ancestors was one of the 72 disciples of Confucius. I saw that. Confucius. I was like, how? I and know, like, so crazy. So if it's like someone says, how? Confucius say, that's your uh -huh. relative. That's well, your I mean, ancestor. he was a disciple. He wasn't actually Confucius, but he was a disciple. <laughs> that's fair. He's a disciple. Still. <laughs> that's crazy i mean how do you even like how are you even able to track that uh because the last name uh yam or run in in uh -huh. uh, mandarin mm -hmm. that's not a very common name so and, and also i have an aunt who who knows the whole family and she helped me like track everything down and like find out all this information which i was like that's pretty incredible to have that lineage. <laughs> that is so we cool. we are indirectly interviewing um, one of the disciples of Confucius. That's yeah. crazy. Great, great, the, you know, the grand what is it? Granddaughter, grand like whatever. Great. Many generations down. <laughs> yeah, that's so cool. Oh my goodness. And and I read a little bit like your story from the book. Can you like share just like your parents' story and? Just like your upbringing, I guess, because you were you were in Hong Kong, you stayed in Hong Kong for a little bit, but also you were um, in the, born in the U.S. Mm -hmm. I was born in the U.S., also raised in Cincinnati. So there's a lot of I'm first generation uh, American. And I think that when I was five living in Hong Kong, Chinese school, fluent, very sassy, you know, fluent in Cantonese. But then when I came to America, I lost a lot of that, you know, because just to fit in, I was the only uh, Chinese kid in a very white society in middle America. And, you know, I actually taught my third grade class how to use chopsticks. Um, <laughs> Passing down the skill. But it was literally like, you know, when my parents would speak to me in Chinese, I would talk to them back in English and I'd be like, we're here in America now. We kind of have to like uh, fit in. Fit so. in, yeah. Oh, yeah. And it was probably harder. <laughs> it's Chinese. It's like, it's like Confucius is shining a light on you. 
<laughs> the skylight so it's kind of it I guess it's, it's not... pretty though <laughs> <laughs> I mean I I can imagine at the time it was probably harder to be Chinese or like or Asian now it's like a trend right well I don't know if it's a trend but I think that a lot of people are stepping up because of Asian hate we're like kind of you know standing oh, up okay. and being loud and proud about who you are I mean I can't change who I am I am Chinese like I like you know to be able to to help people feel comfortable with that too you know my peers my you know or the Asian community and I think you do a great job at that I mean we I mean my, we're named outcasts for a reason we grew up in Macau like foreign faces and then now we're in America like yes we speak English because we speak spoke English at home uh, but it's we're still different you know like the the norms and the the, the way of thinking is still different it's like it's not the norm and so it's like a lot of adjusting and stuff so I completely understand what you're what you mean by that Wow. Yeah, and then you're amplifying the whole, you know, Cantonese Renaissance. <laughs> oh my gosh, thank you. So yeah, and this pouch that you gave us, Gaiao, right? Oil. <laughs> All right, that's like a daily reminder oh, yeah. every day for us to add oil. I life. Yep, for sure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so awesome. Why don't we get into the story of yes. like? how you started with this book and and why you decided to write a love letter to hong kong um with and you can all, tell like you used, used a lot of effort and time in this like it looks amazing thank you <laughs> yeah this is so like it looks so appetizing i just want to mm. Well, the love letter to Hong Kong started also during the pandemic. And it was also, you know, because Hong Kong had their like crazy lockdown, there's a mass ex exodus. There's so many things about Hong Kong that are disappearing, yeah. like the icons, you know, the the neon signs, the, you know, a lot of like restaurants shut down, all these like really Very long nice. time, you know, long time, uh, you know, favorite restaurants. They, there was no business. So there was a lot of stuff that was like, and I was unsure of like, when can I go back? What can, what's going to happen? You know, this is my home. This is where my heart is always been, you know, even though I've lived in America for a while. Um, so I wanted to like do something because before, before it gets erased, like what it was, you know, and, and the foods are so iconic, you know, it was, it, a lot of the foods are born out of, being a colony, you know, like the whole East meets West, the soy sauce, Western kind of stuff. Um, so that's why I wanted to kind of like highlight the 88 bats a bat, you know, <laughs> 88 recipe. <laughs> nice. 88, guys, that's the, that's the most um, lucky number. Yeah, that's 88 <laughs> in uh, Chinese culture. Bats, bats, yeah, but with a plant-based twist, just because I think that also, you know, like just the price of ingredients are so expensive, like meat and seafood. Seafood, who knows what's going to happen to seafood in the next 20 years? Um, you know, it's just not sustainable. And I want to be able to be culturally appropriate, but you don't necessarily need to have the meat at, or seafood. Mm. And I know, you know, yes, it, it is associated a lot with, you know, Cantonese cuisine is very associated with meat, like seal ye or like uh, ta seal and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. All the mm -hmm. roast meats. Um, but there are other things, you know, oftentimes meat is just a little thing, you know, it's like that little sure. bit, little ingredient, like in yu heng kanji, you know, it's only the little tiny bit of mince yeah, pork, yeah. you know, yeah. that, that you don't really necessarily need it, but it's just the texture, it's the balance of flavors and how combination of things, but it's very easily replaced with mushrooms or something like that, that has that, mm -hmm. like, you know, chewiness. The texture, yeah, yeah, yeah. So true. Like, there's a, there's plenty of vegetarian um, restaurants in Macau, I remember. They would have vegetarian cha siu, and I'm like, oh my gosh, this tastes even better. Like, sometimes I know. I'm like, oh, I like the texture even more with the tofu. <laughs> Mm -hmm. and, it, and and I do remember several times going to a vegetarian restaurant and it tastes exactly the same it's like oh this is so yes. good sometimes even better yes it's true but I also wrote a book called uh living without plastic uh which was co-authored with plastic oceans international and uh 
that is, you know, just kind of plastic has infiltrated our lives so much yeah. that it's it's really just choking the planet and, and affecting the planet in very, very negative ways. But so with this book too, you know, I'm trying to do it so that um, I'm shopping basically the way my grandmother used to shop, you know, like I would bring, I bring paper bags to go to the bulk foods. Like the stores are the same when you buy like, you know, loose soybeans or things like that, you know, now they just have plastic bags. But if I bring a paper bag, they don't even bat an eye. They're like, okay, yeah, sure. We'll fill it up and we'll, you just pay. And it saves them from buying another plastic bag and me going, what am I going to do with this plastic bag? Um, so that's a way that, you know, I, I think that we can try to go full circle, you know, with, with, with that um, and go back to like our, like just kind of erase our dependence on plastic if mm -hmm. possible, when possible. Mm. Help save the earth. Right? Yeah. It's true. That's good. You're, you're saving the earth. <laughs> so cool. <laughs> and, uh, and a lot of the recipes in here are like, or even the, the pictures you added, I think the so nostalgic had, nostalgia yeah that's the very first like feeling i got from this and and some of them like even i guess surprised me with in terms of like what like for example like aulam mean that's like very meat based noodle yes. but you have a vegetarian version of that like, oh. also tasi pao i tried the tasi pao at the event and that was really good oh. like i mean even me just looking at the picture here i was like oh my god it looks so real like like the actual chassis bow yeah and it was delicious yeah i mean i try not to use mock meats um so i use mushrooms or i use like uh, uh wheat gluten or or tofu or you know sometimes like i have a steak it's a cabbage steak you know but it has so many different like crevices and stuff and when you have the black pepper sauce on and you're eating it with a fork and knife you still get that same nostalgia even though i'm not necessarily replicating a steak you know and i you know uh but with the alam what i do is there's a key ingredient that a lot of vegan foods lack, mm -hmm. and that's fat. Okay. Ooh. Right? The fat. You it, don't get much fat from the veggies, right? There's no fat in veggies. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so, so, like, I'm with like... It, so that recipe particularly, the broth is amazing. Like, it's it's a very super easy broth to make. I love and, uh, broth. <laughs> And uh, and then and then you just add like a little like spoonful of coconut oil, like unflavored the the refined coconut oil. You mm. add that on top, and you've got the glistening fat. You've got that fat mouth feel. Oh, so then you're God. not you know you're not going oh I'm just eating rabbit food or you know like you don't have that. Oh, you're not, yes. You don't feel it's like you're true. missing out. You know it's so true because because in the yeah I do like in dishes like these they always there's always like a little layer of fat like. <laughs> Even when you eat like um, what's that? I can't talk now, or something like that. Like there's always <laughs> glistening oil in your yeah. lips. <laughs> so shiny, it's like a free lip gloss. <laughs> <laughs> so um, true. And then the most nostalgic for me was like the curry fish ball. So fish ball. That was the craziest recipe. I must have like tested that like a hundred times because it, oh, really? I wanted to get that right, you know, texture, the bouncy texture. And, yeah. but at the end of the day, you know, like fish balls, it's like smothered in curry sauce. So it's, it, yeah. you know, it, it's whether it's a fish ball or whether it's like, you know, made out of potato, kind of like a gnocchi, you know, it, uh -huh. it still will give you that same nostalgia. That's the true. sauce is definitely the main character in fish ball. Oh yeah, it's true. If the sauce is not good, it's like eh. like you know if it's mm -mm. too watery, I'm like mm. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. You, you always go don't yeah. 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 I love it when it's like more like saucy and it's like you you have no idea what's in that sauce. You're like that's a good sauce. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good looking sauce. Every day before school. I would wake up a little early just to get to Chen Fun, you know, before school, because it's like that's the only thing I would like look forward to for school is to Chen Fun. See my Chen. That's yeah. so good. But here, yeah. there's nowhere. You know, I mean, it's naturally vegan. Or that 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 exactly. <laughs> that's that's easy. Uh, but you know, the whole thing about this book, and you know, people have asked me if the recipes are easy, mm -hmm. and. Mm -hmm. I say yes, they're easy, but they're very 
time consuming. You know, like to make your own zhuquan fun, you know, like you, you have a steam tray and you do like a thin layer a little bit at a time and you steam it. You have to wait for a few minutes for it to yeah. set. Then you roll it up and then you like go on to the next. So it is very methodical. And it, yeah. but those things take time. And it for me, it's like it was a very eye opening test to to do all this these recipes because whenever I cook for myself, I just kind of throw something together. I don't, you know, yeah, like quick to, everything here. Yeah, is I'm not fast, trying fast. to replicate something. And people are like, "Do you eat this way every day?" I go, "No, I don't. I don't. I don't eat this way every day because <laughs> it takes time, you know. And yeah, you just yeah. go, you go, you you know, when you buy it for breakfast in Asia, in Macau, or in Hong Kong, it's so cheap, and you're going, so "Why is it so cheap?" Super. You know. And Mm -hmm. and they because they like make it in bulk so they do it very quick for you so it's like why wouldn't you buy you know yeah yeah exactly it's like you're helping them out to buy you know like it's like you're <laughs> helping them finish up the food that they made freshly every day oh. and i guess you could buy more too mm -hmm. mm, yeah so I, I think that's also like the biggest thing for me like moving to the u.s like i'm trying to cook food that really tastes like home but, yeah. but then the more I look into it, the more I'm like, oh my God, like there's so many processes, like it's like long process. It really forces you to slow it down. Like, cause we're so, I'm so used to just cooking quick, um, you know, like quick and easy meals, but um, you can't get the good flavor without like slowing it down and doing everything, you know? Yeah, but once you slow it down and you make it, like if you make a big batch of dumplings or if you make turnip cake, you go through all the steps to make turnip cake, that can last you a long time. True. You know, and then, then that's when you have your quick meals because the, the whole part a lot of, about Chinese cooking too is all about chopping, right? There's a lot of chopping involved. Yeah, chopping, yeah. <laughs> I think cooking even um, Maxi from Maxi Google ah. said that. She's a lot, a lot of chopping. A lot She's of chopping. I just think some people make uh, give vegetable a bad name just because of mm. how they made it. <laughs> oh, for sure, for sure, so vegetables true. do have a bad name. But even even if you go to like Chinese restaurants, right? Like I'm I'm not I'm not a hundred percent vegan because I'm a chef and I want to try things, but I'll try like little bites here and there of mm. like you know, it's not vegetarian because. I need to know how to replicate it if, if necessary, you know, but like I go to restaurants and literally whether it, it, I, the, my only choices are either the green, green vegetables or la hon thai. And you know what? I cannot eat another la hon thai, you know, <laughs> because it's like, it's crazy. I mean, and, and the whole thing, the whole premise of la hon thai, which is Buddhist delight in, in English, um, it's supposed to be 10 vegetables. And then you just go and you are like, everything's brown. <laughs> uh, you know what? It's supposed to be a vegetarian dish. And why is everything brown? You know, that's crazy. It drives me so crazy. Opposite like of vibrant. Yes, exactly. <laughs> not like, brown. <laughs> like, it's definitely not. It's definitely not this. Oh, like, you do not, you do not find this one in, in, so in restaurants. <laughs> I try to make sure to pick every because, color. Because like a Buddhist is like it's like a more humble kind of meals, right? Like these are vibrant, actual <laughs> colored, <laughs> colored food. I uh, mean, this it's still very humble. Like every all the dishes yeah. are like there's nothing really that fancy in it, but it's uh, yeah. I mean, I try to keep. There's a lot of like tantang foods, and it's really mm. fancy for like working class. I mean, there's only a few like the whole fa um like family dinners and stuff yeah um, but yeah, yeah. It, it's I definitely have, a, a mix i have some like relatives here that are um they're allergic to shrimp and i'm like i tr really try to bring them into like try some cantonese um food i think it's perfect like uh, like my husband got, like, he's uh, allergic to gluten siu mai so and then maybe also one like, like, a lot of stuff then, like, it's so uh, hard to oh no she's you know and, and one of the, like, the, the I, uh, things that you gave us in your like, care package is gluten free i was like ah you can try this umami gluten free <laughs> so thank you for that and yeah it just gives like an opening window for more people to try these flavors so it's like you're like the messiah <laughs> I'm not just I, you're I'm opening not. a gateway for them to like oh at least I could try this you know like it's like if they can't have meat right or 
Yeah. Or dairy or eggs. Dairy. I mean, there's a lot of stuff. It, you know, a lot of my, some some people that I was with uh, when yes. I was recipe testing, yes. you know, they're like, oh my God, I can eat everything in your book. You know, I'm like, yeah, because da- the dairy part, you yes. know, and also like, but my eggs, the jing soy dan, oh my God, it's so good. Oh my God, I'm going to try it. And then it's easy. It's just as just easy as you think eggs. You know, it's really like you whiz up a few ingredients and you like put it in a tray and you steam it. Like the traditional methods are there, but the ingredients are slightly different. So cool. Yeah. Do you have, I know it's hard to choose from like the 88 recipes, but do you have one that you like? Or maybe, maybe like, maybe two. We'll give you two or three. Um, I have- <laughs> your, your your favorite and also one that you suggest someone like our followers to try to try okay yeah because i because right like uh for a lot of cantonese dishes like very meat based right so what's one the first they should try mm. like if it's like the first time trying a vegetarian cantonese dish in terms of meat replacement um yeah or like the one that you're most proud of or that they should the that thing done probably all like yeah that's thing really done. i think that's very accessible mm-hmm. the, the thing done is definitely uh accessible i mean a crowd pleaser which i i'm literally going to be making on repeat for the next like four weeks is my turnip cake my Tur- buckle turnip cake i mm-hmm. want it <laughs> she come loves- come to my event come, i come love to turnip cake <laughs> That's so um, there's also, and I know that just from my recipe testing, um, you know, people, the fasan tong, uh, peanut candy, it's like okay. a peanut brittle with like lots of sesame. Mm. They are addicted to it. Like she, she recipe tested and she's like, my boyfriend keeps asking me to make it. Yeah. And, and she's a Western woman, nothing yes. to do with Hong Kong, but like, because it's like, it's, it's not too sweet. Yes, <laughs> I know. Beautiful. Yes. <laughs> peanut butter. I realize a lot of people love peanut butter. I think it's a worldwide thing. Peanut butter. Like, you know, even America, they love peanut. So I think like anything with a peanut, I think people should really try to rice peanut roll, sauce. like with the sauce. Oh my god. Oh, yeah. So good. Yeah, but the, you know, I which I found curious and I don't know why it is. I, I think I need to look into it more, but like Chinese peanuts, like the ones that you buy in the store, in the supermarkets, the red skin ones, or mm. the ones that you served at the table, they're so different from some the peanuts that you would buy That's at Trader true. Joe's. Yeah, well, why is I, that? I, I don't know why it is, but I, I need to find it. I need to look into that. But look they are definitely... Yeah. But <laughs> like also, like, book. even, you know, I don't really eat peanut butter, like, with, with sandwich. It's not, I'm not really a fan of peanut butter, but I always have peanut sauce on my chung bun. <laughs> True. Or I mean, I'm not sure if it's peanut sauce or sesame sauce. Like I think it's it can be either. either. It can be either. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And one thing yeah. great about having a cookbook, like a recipe book, is not having to scroll. Like you know, like when you find a <laughs> recipe right online, like first off you have to see if it's good, and then second you have to like scroll all all, all their like I don't know ads and pop up ads, and then it's like oh where's the where's the ingredients you know here. It's laid out for you, and it's each page, and you see the picture right clear. Oh, this is Yasmin's favorite. Oh, that, my life. Oh, that is your favorite. <laughs> wow. That. And so it's everything so clearly on there. And how long? How long have you been working on this book, or like how long have you? Since when did you start this project? It's been about uh, three years. <gasps> I mean, it's like two guys. years, kind of two years writing and for, for, you know photography um, and research and testing and all that stuff. Uh, another year for the publishing house to get it printed and approved and designed and all that. So and you design yeah. most of these then. I did not design it, but it was a very, it was a really, really good collaboration with uh, between me and the art department at Chronicle Books. Because so, yeah, you're a creative director yourself, right? So you probably yeah. have a very clear vision of how you want the book to look. I did, and and I was able to kind of just convey it and su- make suggestions, and they were really open to it. Like they did amazing, amazing. Like so, I don't know if you saw in the back of the book this page, the sample meals. 
they made it like a cha cha tang menu, you yeah, know? Yeah, so cute. So clever. And then the photography, I worked with a local Hong Kong photographer called um, Jeremy Chung for all the Hong Kong cityscapes. I, I mean, these are so stunning. Yes, I like so I love cool. the pictures of, you know, it just captures so much. And I was trying to go for the in the mood for love kind yes. of uh, vibe. And his photos really just helped, you know, just make this book so extra special. It's so true. Like these pages here, like, mm, wow. Yes, the, the pages so in between good. the recipes. It's Beautiful. So cool. It really like That's makes what... you uh, submerge into the, like, it's like you're in Hong Kong. Any more um, people you want to shout out that you, that you, uh, helped you on this journey? Supported that... this creation. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh. Like, everybody it, it takes a village a to lot. make this book yeah. and literally i mean i have endorsements from grace young from walks of life from kathy Irway, from like just so many incredible people who i admire and respect in the culinary space in the chinese asian culinary space and it's it's nothing short of amazing to be connected and endorsed by these people for the book you know like yeah. i i just I, I can't believe it, seriously. We feel the same way of knowing you, all right? Like, it's amazing that we have this connection and, you know, I feel so happy because obviously this is very nostalgic for us. So yeah. we thank you so much. We, we found our people. Know. Yeah, I, and just like, sorry, just back to the photography, like yeah. even the food photography, like I was like, damn, like these are really high quality good quality photos and you know a lot about the the book and the food and you know the like Cantonese food in general <clears throat> it is about balance too you know the the hot and the cold you know yeah. the you eat hay versus the it's like yin and yang yes. yeah the yin and yang of food so there's a lot that you know that people don't realize you know in terms of the way that the food is structured, you know, the, the balance of the hot and cold, the balance of textures, you know, crunchy and the, the, the umami and the sweet, like there's always sweet, a little bit of sweetness in it too, you know, um, yes. to just make the dish a complete dish. Yes, I think that's the balance is, is definitely a big part of the Cantonese cuisine, just it's the everything. flavors. Too much of anything is not good. Though. Great. Oh, yeah. my gosh. Oh. <laughs> so, Thank you guys so much for listening. Thank you so much for connecting with us and our listeners. And yeah. be sure to follow Christine Wong on uh, Conscious Cooking mm -hmm. on on, our, on Instagram, and also um, check out her website. All right, yes. check out her tour dates. If you want to get into um, the Cantonese food, like with vegetarian and also like a little bit of a can Hong Kong feel, this book would give you that. Oh yes, get it. And it's also so pretty. Like gotta love it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, we should have done that. <laughs> All right. That's good. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time, Thank Christine. You. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank oh, you. Yeah. All right, well, guys. Hope to see you guys soon and see you on her tours maybe. And um stay tuned for our next episode. Cesare de. Bye. Bye. <laughs>